Hi there, I'm the MythKeeper. Welcome back to my channel, the best place on the internet for Pathfinder lore and history. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. And if there's anything you'd like me to talk about in particular, let me know in the comments below as I do read all the comments. This week we're going back to my religion series. Uh, as I talked about on my recent Eons video, uh, I was separating my lawful neutral outsiders into two separate videos, one dedicated to Eons and the other one dedicated to the Eon constructs known as the Inevitables. So that's this video. Uh, the Inevitables are among my favorite uh, of the outsider types, and I know I say that a lot, but I really mean it this time. Uh, the idea of God machines, pretty cool. Uh, something that uh, I really embraced with some of my own characters uh, that uh, maybe I'll talk about at some point. Uh, anyway, I think the Inevitables are really cool. Enjoy. Three weeks ago, I discussed the Eons in my religion series. Natives of the Astral Plane, the Eons emerged as the balancing force, serving to counterbalance the primal chaos that was represented by the Proteans. If you haven't already watched that video, I recommend you start there, and with the video on the Proteans, both of which are linked below. As part of the struggle against chaos, the Eons established the city of Axis to be a bastion of order in the young multiverse, and they did so when the forces of chaos were busy fighting among themselves. The primary inhabitants of the city of Axis were a new breed of Eons, named the Axiomites, whose minds were all slightly linked as part of a divine collective called the Axiomite Godmind, which represented not just the living citizens of Axis, but also the will of the city itself. Possessed of a near-infinite power to bring about order to a chaotic world, the Godmind needed protecting from the Proteans in the great war between order and chaos at the dawn of time, which is recounted in the ancient tome called the Concordance of Rivals. To that end, the Axiomites realized that they would not be sufficient to turn back the tide of chaos, even with their allies among the other eons and among the native denizens of Phrasma's Boneyard, a demiplane that survived the collapse of the previous universe. So the Axiomites turned to one of the great strengths of the forces of order, the power to build. Working tirelessly between bouts with the Proteans, the Axiomites constructed the first Inevitables, tireless construct soldiers built of the raw quintessence of law and powered by the divine might of the Godmind. With the power of the Inevitables, Axis was preserved, and consistent physical laws stabilized the young universe. The great balance sought by the Eon's progenitor deity, the Monad, was established, as life found a foothold and began to thrive. Today, Inevitables are extraordinary beings, with a specific role in the cosmic order. They are the soldiers of Axis, and serve as the executors of the Godmind's will. Initially created by the Axiomites to directly combat the chaotic forces, their primary mission was to wage war against the Proteans. However, with the Protean conflict in an uneasy standstill, Inevitables have increasingly received new orders, enforcing the laws of reality and society. In terms of their physical characteristics, Inevitables are living machines, and their bodies reflect this nature. Most of them take on statuesque humanoid forms made of stone and metal. Some may deviate from this template to better execute their duties, altering their bodies as necessary. Despite their mechanical appearance, they are highly intelligent beings, capable of evolving their own perspectives. They also possess a living quintessence, which allows them to be healed by positive energy magic, as a living creature would be. Inevitables are well aware of their awe-inspiring presence, and tend to use a steely, booming voice to ensure immediate obedience. They operate within an unspoken hierarchy. The prime inevitables, the most powerful among them, focus on emerging threats to the Eternal City. These inevitables are such powerful reservoirs of the Godmind's power, in fact, that they are functionally demigods, able to take on mortal worshippers and grant them divine power. Beneath the prime inevitables, most inevitables are ranked by order of the power of the model, but this is not always exclusively true. Though generally more powerful inevitables outrank lesser ones, the intricacies of their hierarchy involve various other factors too, including the immediacy and severity of their assigned task. The Axiomites, who of course created the Inevitables, exist outside of the Inevitable hierarchy. Inevitables respect the Axiomites for their role as creators, but today they operate more as partners than as servants. The only beings that Inevitables absolutely obey are the Prime Inevitables, who they consider living treasures to be protected at all costs. Each inevitable emerges with a specific mandate or jurisdiction, such as the enforcement of contracts or the suppression of rebellions. This mandate will drive an inevitable's actions throughout its existence. Some inevitables regularly return to Axis for new orders, while others venture out to different planes, continents, or planets to restore order as they see fit. When mortals perform grave acts against the cosmos that put them at odds with the inevitable guardians, they should be warned that the inevitables have few ambitions beyond their commitment to their charter and cannot be swayed by bribes. They may, however, be open to offering leniency in sentencing in exchange for assistance in ending a more significant infraction. 
Inevitables are created in the adamantine crucible on Axis, where their durable bodies are formed from the multiverse's greatest forge. These bodies are only part of the final product. The essence of an inevitable bonds with a petitioner, which means each modern inevitable, like an angel or a devil, can typically trace their lineage back to a dead and judged mortal. This union forges a powerful new being, with the personality of its animating spirit being subtly retained in the new body. The Types of Inevitables Arbiters The Arbiter Inevitables are stealthy, observant, and persuasive inevitables that serve as scouts and diplomats, found in various courts and on battlefields across the multiverse. Arbiters typically appear as small clockwork spheres with metallic wings, and they maintain a peaceful demeanor unless facing true agents of chaos. Despite their small size, Arbiter Inevitables are surprisingly heavy, weighing up to 60 pounds. Their ability to fly with these metal wings is therefore both a physical and supernatural ability. Arbiter Inevitables often also serve as familiars to spellcasters who are of lawful alignment, but they always view themselves as advisors and counselors rather than servants. When not serving as a familiar on the material plane, their primary mission is to monitor and counter the forces of chaos, while attempting to persuade those who can still be saved to embrace the law. When an Arbiter identifies a significant surge of chaos on a particular plane, it takes immediate action to rally allies against the growing instability. In combat, they often use protective spells like protection from chaos on their allies and employ magical commands to disarm their opponents. Their most potent weapon, the ability to release a deadly burst of internal energy, is reserved for critical situations and battles crucial to upholding the law as it results in a period of downtime that they find unsettling. Collier Root Collier Roots are the relentless enforcers of contracts, traveling to the far reaches of the plains to ensure that oathbreakers face consequences and agreements are upheld. They are unconcerned with the specifics of the deals involved. Their sole focus is on ensuring that promises are honored and debts are repaid. Among the inevitables, Collier Roots are the least conspicuous, even in their natural form. They stand as tall as humans, but weigh considerably more due to their unique composition. With the ability to become invisible and use disguised self to seamlessly blend into humanoid societies, Collier Roots often adopt the guise of cloaked warriors wielding finely crafted bastard swords. This clever disguise allows them to move unnoticed, and their mechanical faces remain concealed until the critical moment when they reveal themselves, leaving their targets to grasp the true nature of these mysterious figures often too late. Given the ambiguous and intricate nature of their missions, Collier Roots are the most talkative of the inevitables. They possess a natural elegance and a deep understanding of social customs, which aids them in gathering information about their targets and in issuing challenges or carrying out sentences on the battlefield. While they typically prefer solitude like their kindred, Collier Roots may occasionally permit members of other races to join them and work together towards common objectives. However, they have no qualms about abandoning or exploiting these comrades if it serves the greater purpose of fulfilling their mission. Zelikuts. Zelikuts serve as a combination of bounty hunter and executioner on a relentless quest to track down elusive lawbreakers who are evading justice. Zelikuts are determined to ensure that law and justice prevail, even for the most notorious and skilled individuals across the multiverse. Paradoxically, despite their unwavering commitment to their duty, Zelikuts have little interest in passing their own judgments. This stance often perplexes other races. Instead, Zelikuts are content with enforcing the law, but not necessarily with the particulars of what the law is. The Zelikuts recognize that laws can vary from place to place, and their role is not to impose moral judgment, but merely to track down individuals attempting to escape their rightful punishment. Merit. Merits are colossal beings, clad in onyx and golden armor, and their very presence shakes the ground with each deliberate thunderous step. Their approach is methodical, relentless, and purposeful, seemingly in no hurry. Merits primarily pursue mortal souls who have artificially extended their lifespans beyond the limits feasible for their race. This includes individuals like liches and other powerful magic users who have tampered with the natural order of life and death. They also bring judgment to those who employ extraordinary but unethical means to avoid death, such as a corrupt magistrate who sacrifices an entire starving town to preserve himself, or those who use divination magic to evade their prophesied deaths. While Merits possess the ability to eloquently converse in any language and often gather extensive information from those intimidated by their imposing presence, they rarely engage in conversation or form strategic alliances with mortals. Even on the battlefield, these juggernauts prefer to remain silent, understanding that their targets are well aware of their transgressions and that all mortals harbor secret desires for immortality. Lakshirut A typical Lakshirut is a formidable construct with six arms, appearing to be a fusion of metal and stone. Instead of legs, it possesses a complex orb composed of spinning rings, reminiscent of an orrery which grants it the power of flight. 
While it sports massive metal wings additional to this, these primarily serve as flight stabilizers. Four of the construct's arms are equipped with functional hands, typically carrying an assortment of weapons. Its lower two arms hold large flaming spheres, which it employs to generate elemental bolts of energy. Lax cheroots are tasked with preserving the separation between different planes of reality. They pay little heed to minor breaches by visitors crossing from one plane to another, or the occasional creation of pocket dimensions. Their concern lies in any attempt to establish a permanent connection between planes, or the invasion of one plane by the inhabitants of another. They frequently find themselves in opposition to powerful outsiders seeking to create beachheads on foreign planes for large-scale invasions. When possible, Lakshiruts enforce planar separation by dismantling any devices causing such dangerous rifts, or eliminating any creature intent on intermingling or blending realities. They are indifferent to the reasons behind such infractions, and often deaf to any argument, suggesting the benefits of temporary plane connections. While single-minded, Lakshiruts are not devoid of reason or incapable of negotiation. On rare occasions, a Lakshirut may agree to temporarily allow a planar link, provided a detailed explanation is given on how this aligns with the Lakshirut's ultimate goals of safeguarding the planes. Even when forming alliances, Lakshirut's insist on primary mission objectives before assisting with other tasks. It seeks guarantees from allies to fulfill their commitments once their own objectives are met. The Prime Inevitables Today, only four prime inevitables remain in service, ancient machine gods dating back to the Protean War of staggering power. Each is tasked with the preservation of some powerful cosmic law, and their cosmic purview has grown since the early days of their creation, because so many among their number have been destroyed by the forces of chaos. Indeed, although there are only four prime inevitables in operation today, once they're numbered as many as ten. Let's start with recounting the names of the six fallen. Argreth, the Burning Monolith. Once this towering machine god of burning stone was the lord of thermodynamics. He established the physical laws associated with heat and friction, and he helped refine the colossal furnace that would later build the subsequent inevitables. However, Argreth was slain by the protean lord named Il Sirish, and today his ruins can be found orbiting Il Sirish's strange domain, known as the Labyrinth of Light and Loss. Onitath, the Eternal Comprised of numerous slowly rotating calendar stones, Onitath, the prime inevitable of calendars, eternity, and tradition, once oversaw the passage of time across countless planes. Onitath established the enduring cycle of days and nights that continue in access to this day. However, during a surprise attack by Proteans, Onitath was among the initial responders. In a daring move, Onitath seized the Protean Lord leading the assault and transported both themselves and the Protean to the dimension of time to protect the Eternal City. Since that day, Onatath has remained missing, and it is believed that in a world outside time, these two adversaries continue their ongoing conflict to this day. Ahenhab, the Foundation The relentless strategies of the Maelstrom strained the forces of Axis, but Ahenhab embodied the principles of adaptation and evolution to adjust to each new protean tactic and stratagem. This prime inevitable of construction, innovation, and transformation personally devised plans for the fortification of the Eternal City's walls, and led campaigns to crush Protean saboteurs. When Rovagug posed a threat to creation, she created a potent device of pure law to restrain the formidable god. Although her endeavor nearly succeeded, the rough beast ultimately broke free, and annihilated both Ahenhab and her device. The fragments of this device are said to still drift through the astral plane, though none now know how to rebuild it. Gualti, the Joyful March. As petitioners began to appear in Axis, Proteans and Demons had already initiated assaults on its outskirts. To muster every available defender, Gualti organized extensive training programs that persist with minimal alterations to this day. Gualti, the prime inevitable of discipline, education, and training, met her end while diverting Rovagag's attention, allowing Ahenhab to attempt to restrain the deity. Gualti is revered even after her death, but her destruction led to a collective amnesia regarding her teaching of something known as the Twamni. Some claim it was a team sport, others a warrior code, and still others some kind of unique weapon. Tarnik, the shared voice. Despite being taken off guard by the initial attacks, Axis rallied against the forces of chaos with its own armies. This united force responded with a singular voice, channeled by Tarnik, the new prime inevitable of formations, unity, and volunteers. The counterattack dispersed a horde of demons, due to the unwavering dedication of the Inevitables to their duty and comrades. Ultimately, Tarnik fell in combat as Proteans outmaneuvered his well-organized battle lines, enveloping his forces and dismantling his armored form within sight of the city. Tatopok, the Unsleeping Blade Every Inevitable lives to serve, acknowledging the possibility of their own demise while upholding order. 
Tato Park emerged as one of the last prime inevitables, created during a lull in the Chaos Wars, to ensure that Axis remained vigilant and never grew compliant. This prime inevitable representing sacrifice soldiers and vigilance tirelessly patrolled the city's walls until the Titans rebelled against the gods. When the mighty Thanatotic Titan general Zormonidae posed a threat to Axis, Tato Pak personally challenged her to single combat. Their duel resulted in both of their deaths, and although the Titanic invaders attempted to retreat, the battle had granted enough time for the forces of the Eternal City to encircle and annihilate the first of many invading armies. The surviving prime inevitables are as follows. Jerishal, the Turning Sphere. The conquest of nature and the emergence of cities represent a relatively advanced stage in the development of civilization. However, for countless eons preceding this phase, the planets upon which these cities arised had to adhere to predictable orbits and comply with the laws of cosmic physics. As the prime inevitable of planes, planetary orbits, and gravity, Jerishal oversees the multiverse from a colossal observatory that hovers above Axis, ensuring that stars, solar systems, and even galaxies maintain their orderly patterns and do not deviate beyond predictable models. While Jerishal acknowledges the potential threat posed by asteroids, meteors, and other celestial bodies colliding with the world, they do not advocate for the complete annihilation of such dangers. Instead, Jerishal encourages the advancement of fields like astronomy, astrophysics, and technology to divert these celestial missiles or enable substantial populations to evacuate their planets. As a result, the turning sphere, as he is called, indirectly supports the cause of space exploration, often earning the respect of spacefaring entities such as witch weirds and other advanced aliens. Jerishal exhibits particular concern for the interaction between the outer planes and the inner planes as well, favoring the preservation of each plane's isolated physics. They aim to prevent the encroachment of one realm from altering the orbits and processes of another. Devotees of Jerishal often frequent planar portals and breaches to ensure that these openings do not unduly expand or obstruct other realms. Of all the prime inevitables, Jerishal holds a special place for me personally, because for a few years I played a character named Zhugang Law, also known as Master Law, an impossibly ancient Tianman and a pact witch of Jerishal, with an arbiter companion named Young Master Shen. He ended up being one of the most fun characters I've ever played, which just goes to show that any of these demigods can end up being significant in your own campaigns and adventures. Kirkamoth, the Waiting Void Kirkamoth is the prime inevitable of emptiness, stillness, and time. While philosophers may at times mistake decay for the relentless advance of entropy, the followers of Kirkamoth possess a deeper understanding. They recognize that natural decay, whether on a visible or atomic scale, plays a vital role in maintaining a harmonious multiverse. In the emptiness left behind, there exists a unique order, and the potential for the emergence of something new. Just as a falling tree creates space for new life to flourish, the gradual breakdown and controlled disintegration of civilizations yield vacant realms ready to be filled with fresh innovation. In order for creation to persist, there must be carefully regulated emptiness. Above all, these processes should unfold quietly, in calculated, predictable, and systemic manners. Kirkamoth and his followers are particularly opposed to the indiscriminate destruction wrought by entities such as demons and proteans, which pose a significant threat to this delicate balance. Otolmens, the Universal Otolmens is the prime inevitable of machinery, math, and physics. As all know, physics serve as the foundation of the cosmos, giving rise to phenomena such as the birth of nebula, the demise of stars, and even the most basic atomic phenomena too small for the human mind to properly conceive. However, supernatural forces like magic, souls, outsiders, and deities often introduce variables that not only distort the logic fabric of the universe, but also challenge the bedrock of mathematics. Atolmens, situated in Axis, vigilantly observes the universe with the aid of numerous axiomites who tirelessly process the vast influx of data and observations that she meticulously records. When her predictions encounter irregularities, she deploys teams of outsiders, and occasionally mortals, to investigate, reporting their findings and rectifying the disturbances directly. Locations where the cosmic equations are vulnerable take precedence, and her agents frequently find themselves in debate with eons over the best methods to address these disruptions. Atolmens regularly compiles reports for a range of deities, summarizing her discoveries and outlining her proposed corrective measures. After countless such submissions, these reports have become largely formalities, not only because the divine entities have become desensitized to the messages, but also because there is little a deity could say in response to dissuader. In the grand scheme of the cosmos, her recalibrations are subtle and ultimately contribute to the preservation of the multiverse. 
Consequently, she continues her calculations with minimal interruption, aided by the dedication of thousands of axiomites and visiting mortal mathematicians. Valmalos, the answering rite. Standing apart from the other three prime inevitables, Valmalos concerns himself less with science and more with magic. Due to their supernatural origins, most denizens of the Outer Plains possess a natural affinity for commanding magic to serve their purpose. However, the inherent essence of these beings guide their use of magic, ensuring it aligns with their nature and the needs of the multiverse. In contrast, mortal individuals eagerly seek out and exploit magic, lacking both the instinctive responsibility to wield it appropriately and the eons of practice to do so flawlessly. Yet, whether mortal spellcasters realize it or not, magic adheres to fundamental principles, and whenever simpler beings attempt to misuse or trivialize it, Valmalos, the prime inevitable of magic and ceremonies, intervenes. Valmalos has a tendency to view mortals as unpredictable and reckless, endeavoring to prevent them from treating magic as a mere plaything. He plays a role in the creation of the intricate material, somatic, and verbal components that are often essential in magic, acting as gatekeeper to ensure that amateurs must invest the necessary training and practice to wield the power responsibly. Consequently, Valmalos generally favors the methodologies of wizards, while his adherents exercise caution and at time prejudices when dealing with sorcerers and other innate spellcasters. Valmalos evaluates most other mortal spellcasters on a case-by-case -case basis, placing greater importance on their past use of magic than on the specific arcane tradition that granted them their power. Valmalos regards his devoted followers not as mere worshippers, but as students and advocates, who can learn from him and further refine magical practices to safeguard them from the ignorant. His priests often accept and educate apprentices for more extended periods than necessary, sometimes even tracking down former students at the slightest hint of arcane misconduct. Thank you.